हाँ सर शुरू करते हैं मैं आपको इंट्रोड्यूस करता हूँ सर आर यू रेडी सर हाँ सर आप माइक ऑन कीजिए हाँ तो वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर टूडे सी एम यू वन फिफ्टी नाइन सी एम यू ऑन बी ऑफ ऑफ नई डॉक्टर फाउंडेशन टूडे वी हैव विद अस डॉक्टर सोमेन डे ही इज एम सी एच यूरोलॉजिस्ट एडवांस रोबोटिक यूरोलॉजी ट्रेनिंग हैज डन एट नाडियाल He is a consultant of uh, Euro oncologist and urologist. He is attached to Kokila Bain Dhirubhambani uh, Hospital, New Mumbai, and he has his own clinic at Mahavir Center, Sector 17, Vashi. So, welcome, Dr. Somande. Please go on. Thank you, Dr. Kore. Uh, yes. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kore and New Mumbai Doctor Foundation for uh, giving me this opportunity to uh, speak before you. Uh, I I hope I am audible properly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. uh uh dr khure has asked me to speak all about prostate but then it is very difficult to include so you are mute please hello right right go on sir please yeah. so it is very difficult to finish everything about prostate in an hour time and uh the basic the most important part of prostate is bph but uh, when we are uh, uh dr kore you have to yes. give me one minute yes sir i think i have done some mistake the other ppt is opened up i think i have to open the second ppt Hello what is wrong with the video please Can you hear me Dr Kure Yes sir yes. we can hear you Yeah give me a second But I'm not able to share the screen with you Can you see my screen No sir Again, the same problem. Basically, uh, you first open your uh, presentation uh, on desktop first slide, and then go to screen share that, and select the screen then from there. Uh, now we can share. Yeah. Now we can see, na? No? Yes, yes, sir, yes. Yeah. So, uh, we'll. As I said, it is very difficult to speak uh, everything about uh, BPH uh, on a single uh, uh, sitting, but uh, we we'll just try to interact and know about the latest in the treatment of our rheumatic disease caused by the prostate. And so, looking at the anatomy of the prostate. the prostate is a pelvic organ which lies just below the bladder so this is the bladder which stores urine the prostate lies between the bladder and the urethra so the urine from the bladder goes through a tube known as the urethra which passes 
to the prostate. That is basically the basic anatomy of the prostate is that the urine from the bladder pass through the prostate via the urethra into the exterior. This is the only thing we need to know about the anatomy. The function of prostate, in short, it forms prostatic fluid, which is important for as the content of the seminal fluid. So, as the important, this important a uh, in in our fertility. Once the reproductive function is over, the prostate per se has no function at all. So, when we have to speak of the diseases of the prostate, we have to speak on uh, BPH. We have to speak on CA prostate. We have to speak on infection infections of the prostate. So, I would like to uh, request uh, Dr. Kuri to give me opportunity some other day for CA prostate because combining all of them together becomes uh, very difficult. But then, if there is any question on the audience regarding CA prostate, I'll be uh, very happy to answer. But otherwise, I will keep my uh, talk more restricted to the most common thing we come in our day-to-day -day practice. That is about our uh, that is the uh, uh, blood rotted obstruction caused by BPH. So let us try to understand the concept of uh, BPH, LUTS, blood rotted obstruction, symptoms of blood rotted obstruction, and the treatments of LUTS. So today in my talk, I will cover these topics one by one. First, we'll uh, try to uh, discuss a little about what is BPH. Then I will come to what is lower intrinsic symptoms and what are the different things which causes lower intrinsic symptoms. As you know that BPH is one of the cause of lower urinary tract symptoms. There are many other causes. So we cannot discuss the prostate alone without discussing a little, you know, highlighting a little about what are the other pathologies which can cause ETS along with BPH. We'll also discuss about blood outlet obstruction. What is the meaning of it? How will you diagnose it? What are the different causes of it? How will you work up a patient of blood outlet obstruction? And then we can ultimately diagnose it is because of BP and something else is not causing this bladder outlet obstruction. And we'll also like at the at the end focus on treatment of lower hepatic symptoms due to BPH. So to begin with, what is benign hyperplasia of prostate? So as I have told you, so bladder, then comes the prostate, then comes the urethra. So when there is an enlargement of the prostate. We call it a benign prostatic enlargement. Benign pro prostatic hyperplasia is the right term, although, which hyperplasia basically means increase in the cell number. So basically, it is not a hypertrophy, it is a hyperplasia. So number of the cells in the prostate increases, and it is very much dependent on androgen, that is testosterone. This part of knowledge is very important. So if somebody uh, has been ocketectomized in childhood, because of trauma or because of cancer, they will never have any prostate disease. So this is a very important thing, which you should uh, keep uh, in our notice that uh, without uh, androgen, basically our prostate diseases do not uh, happen without androgen. So androgens are a very important part of prostate disease. Now, this enlargement, so prostate basically has three lobes. So sometimes we may have an enlargement of only the median lobe, this is the picture A, Sometimes there may be enlargement of only the lateral lobe and no median lobe enlargement. Sometimes there may be enlargement of all three. And sometimes there is no enlargement per se. Only this median bar is enlarged, but that can also cause obstruction. If you can see here, there is a median bar which is obstructing, and that can also cause obstruction. So a small gland, what I mean to say is that a small gland can also cause obstruction. A very important question is comes and is what is the normal size of prostate? Now, there is nothing in literature to say this is the normal size of prostate. A prostate which is not causing any problem is normal. With 100 grams, with 150 grams, it may be normal. We frequently see patients with 100 gram prostates with no problem at all. So if you look at the uh, picture D, if you can visualize the number, these lateral lobes are very large, very large, growing laterally and not obstructing the center. 
will there be any problem because of the prostate enlargement there will not be any so there is no definite normal size of the prostate but all sizes are normal there is nothing uh, for that this is normal or this is high this is less what is important to note is that it is the degree of obstruction that is important or the disease the prostate develops is important and size is no correlation with either bph or prostate cancer or prostatitis nothing next let us cover uh, known a little about uh, bph what is bph basically scientifically a benign hyper uh, prostate hyperplasia now let us come to what are lower urinary symptoms and what are the differential diagnosis of lower urinary symptoms this is very important because when a patient comes to us in our clinic the patient do not come to us with doctor i have bph patient comes to us with a group of symptoms which is today known as lower urinary symptoms and one of the differential diagnosis of that lower urinary symptoms is prostatic problem or bph so lower urinary symptoms we can remember by this simple mnemonic p i w s a u n we call it pispan p stands for poor stream of urine i stands for intermittent flow of urine s stands for tens of incomplete evacuation of bladder other s stands for straining during passing urine so these are obstructive symptoms a poor stream an intermittent flow a sense of incomplete evacuation and straining while passing urine these are obstructive symptoms or voiding symptoms we use today f u n that is stands for frequency urgency and nocturia they are known as irritative once or two times they are called irritative symptoms now we call them storage symptoms so storage symptoms as the name implies is more a function of the bladder and the voiding symptoms is the main name implies is more a function of the obstruction because of the prostate now let's to know that uh, lower urinary symptoms is caused by obstruction to the blood flow one of the cause of blood or flow obstruction is bph so first when the patient comes to me symptom uh, pis par there is poor stream this thing when patient comes to me with this uh, lower urinary symptom patient may have blood urinary obstruction patient may have a lower urinary stone i will show some diagrams in in the current course the patient may have only infection it may be bladder or prostate malignancy the patient may also have a neurological disease so all these things are known to cause this uh, lower urinary symptom coming to next so uh, the last slide as i have told you lower urinary symptoms ka ek important cause hai bladder outlet obstruction so let us come to what are the uh, what is blood, what do we mean by bladder outlet obstruction and how do you find it out so when this patient comes to me with this symptom that is pis pan as i say then uh, bladder outlet obstruction is one cause as i say the other cause are non obstructive like infections like uh, neurological disorder like cancer of the bladder like stones but there are some things which is cause obstruction to the outflow of the bladder and the patient comes us to obstructive symptoms so when somebody comes us the doctor mera peshab theek se nahi ho raha hai jor lagana pad raha hai not necessarily it is bph bph is one of the cause other cause may be prostate cancer other cause may be stricture of the urethra other cause may be a stone the patient may be having a urethral stone the patient may be external urethral meatal stenosis is a possibility say i will have some simple diagram in the coming course to tell you that these are all so in our once it comes to our clinic we should know these are the possibilities and that's that's why all lutas all bladder outlet obstruction are not due to bph there are other causes also this is a very important part of treating bph knowing that other things can cause symptoms very similar to bph that's why i'm stressing this again and again we shall now discuss in short bph and those condition may be bladder outlet obstruction so if you see this simple diagram this is a patient this is the bladder this is his urethra this is his prostate so this is his bladder urethra and prostate so as you see in this test which is a retrograde urethra his prostate is open but his urethra is blocked he will come to you the same symptom poor stream straining frequency nocturia but does he have bph no he although he has a prostate his prostate is not blocking what is blocking is his urethra in this patient in the second diagram you can see the prostate obstructing 
So he, this guy is a large prostate, but this is not obstructing. This guy is a large prostate which is going towards the inside and it is obstructing. If you see in this diagram of urethrogram, so the urethra is completely normal. This angle, if you see the angle of this bone, or this is the inferior pubic tubercle. From here the prostate starts. If you see, this is totally blocked and this is totally normal. Unlike in this diagram in which the urethra was abnormal and the prostate was normal. So this in this diagram I've shown you two diseases which can cause blood rotted obstruction. One is stricture and other is prostate. So not necessarily everything will be prostate. So this is another diagram again same. So this is the bladder, this is the urethra comes through the prostate going to the outside and this patient has a stricture. We may have sometimes both stricture and BP. So this is a who has BP, who has stricture. It's very important to diagnose it because Patients, uh, if we uh, don't tell the patient what to expect from therapy, and for example, if I don't diagnose this here, uh, whatever tamsulosin or alkalosin or celodosin I give, can I give relief to this patient? No, because tamsulosin, celodosin doesn't affect the urethra. So it's very important to know that this is stricture is a very important differential diagnosis of BPH. We cannot forget it. Hence, patient may have stones. So unless we have done a sonography, we have just given the patient Urimax. How do the patient get relief? If you have stone like this, what therapy you give? The stone is going to block the passage and he is not going to get any relief because the stone is blocking. So this is uh, this is another thing. He is stone in the ureter. You see this patient has a stone in the ureter. So this is the cystoscopy in which looking at the inside of the bladder. And this is from where the urine drains into the bladder. This is the ureteric orifice. You can see this ureteric orifice is blocked by the stone. The nerve supply of the ureteric orifice and the nerve supply of the urethra is same. So a patient with a stone here will have same symptoms. The young fellow coming to you saying that I'm having doctor I'm having difficulty in the passing urine. At the end of passing urine, I'm having a lot of pain. If you have not done a sonography, you have not thought that uh, stone is a possibility, you will miss the diagnosis. You will give him Urimax and you will have no benefit out of it. So so difficult, so causes of difficulties in urination. So I use this general term, difficulties in urination. One is prostate, the, all the diseases of the prostate, be it uh, BPH, be it CF prostate, be it prostatitis, other is stricture urethra, other is stones in bladder, neck, and urethra, or ureter, other is infection, other is neurological disease. You should remember all this. So somebody has a spine disorder, the nerve supply of the bladder is gone. He's, uh, he's, uh, he will not provide properly. So, neurological disease can also cause it. So, everything should be uh, kept, and kept in tandem while discussing this. So, next, after we discussed about little about what is BPH, what is LUTS, the PISPAN, I told you, PISPAN is, uh, is a symptom uh, complex which comprises LUTS. I told you one of the causes of LUTS is blood outlet obstruction. The other causes are infection, uh, neurological disorder, cancers of the bladder. Now, we'll discuss about what are the symptoms of blood obstruction. BPH and how you work up a patient with BPH. So symptoms and clinical examination. So we'll take the patient terms that voiding symptoms, poor stress of hair kidney, storage symptoms, hair kidney, very important. So if the patient has storage symptoms, we should know that his bladder has been affected by the, uh, what you call, by the prostate or he might be having a stone in the bladder. He might be having a tumor in the bladder. So somebody who has less voiding symptoms and more storage symptoms, like more frequency, more urgency, more nocturia, we should think that it may not be prostate, it may be something else also. Then if the patient, so the patient usually comes to the clinic with this piece one. Second, the patient may tell, doctor, I have a blood in urine. So don't think that I have blood in urine because of only prostate. It may be because of a kidney cancer, a bladder cancer, a prostate cancer. Before uh, blaming the prostate for the blood in urine, although commonly prostate shows our blood in urine, we have to rule out other causes. Sometimes the patient may come with signs and symptoms of complications, like a big in the fed, uh, foot because he has got renal failure because of a long standing untreated prostate. Sometimes the patient can come with retention of urine, retention of urine, a chronic and acute painful retention of urine. Clinical examination. So clinical examination you should do. I will show you some diagrams of what a local examination is so important. Uh, then uh, DRE, that digital rectal examination. Never forget to do a rectal examination of prostate who has come to your clinic with a symptoms of prostate disease. Why? Because unless you do a DRE, you will miss prostate cancer. Sometimes, excuse me. 
Sometimes PSA may be normal and the patient may still may harbor prostate cancer. Just to put a finger in his rectum and you have examined the uh, prostate, you will not know a hard prostate. So, this is to be done. Workup. Uroflometry is a part of workup. Sonography abdomen is a part of workup. Serum PSA, RFT, urine routine. This is a minimum thing you should do for the workup. A uroflometry, a sonography of the abdomen, a post word acidal urine, a serum PSA, a renal test, urine routine has to be done. Well, as I go gradually, I will tell the importance of this. Uroflometry basically tells us how severe the obstruction is. Sonography tells us so many things. This is the bladder, the stone in the uh, ureter. It may be a bladder tumor. Serum PSA, a very important differential diagnosis of BPG, CA prostate. Very important rule of same prostate. RT, creatine is raised, you know, one reason of raised creatine may be uh, the prostate. Urine routine, it may show infection, it may show blood. A diabetic patient may have a uh, blood, blood, or lot of blood problem, a lot of UTI. CBC is very important. Why? If somebody with a low hemoglobin and raised creatine, we know that the patient may be a patient of renal failure. Uh, Dr. Khure, can you listen to me? Are you there? Everything is Anyone fine. Is Please, everything is fine. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you have, do you have any questions or can, can I continue we'll to the next We'll take question part? at the end of the session. We'll take question at the end of the session. Yeah, I'm not fast now. It's okay, no? No, no, you are good. Follow. Yeah, you're doing well. Yeah. So, next, I will show, tell you a few things about local examination. So, this is some salient point. So, now, unless you examine the patient, you will treat the patient with Urimax and you will not know the patient will have a, a metal stenosis. No, this is obstructed nerve. How he can pass urine if he has a metal stenosis? So it is very important to examine the patient. You see this metal stenosis, we know that uh, although the prostate may be there, the metal stenosis may be the cause of the symptom. This is known as lichen sclerosis. Sometimes the patient refuse very completely stenosis because of this. And this is again a condition known as vitiligo. So you see, the metal is normal. It is not stenosis. Here the metal is small. Just a white stain is not a uh, metal stenosis. It is clearly seen here. This is a acral vitiligo. It's very common in males, acral vitiligo. And this is a metal stenosis. So local examination is very important. Looking at the patient's foot is very important. If you see this edema, it may be that you can know that this prostate may be the one of the cause of the edema. However, not forget the heart failure. You should not forget uh, the hypoprotein, uh, hypoalbuminemia. You should not forget the lymphedema or all other things. But at the same time, you should know that somebody has edema, fluid overload, prostate, these are possible. How this prostate causes edema, I'll discuss a small because uh, a small about 10 years. So if there, if you retain a lot of urine in the bladder because of the obstruction, how can the kidney empty into the bladder? So this is the meaning of hydronephrosis. Swelling of the kidney water. Because the bladder is full, in a chronic retention. So the kidney is not able to empty into the bladder. So the creatine is raised. Kidney is not able to excrete the water load. So the food becomes solid. So this is chronic retention of urine or obstructive urinary. So this is a very important part of local examination. So when the patient comes to you with the symptoms of stream and all, it has to be seen. You have to do a rectal examination. You have to do a local examination. You have to see his foot at least. So again, this, this is just for you to know uh, how, what, how bad a metal stenosis may be. A metal, normal metal should be of the size of this, 8.5. In this patient, it is even smaller than this. This, what is this inside, is 0.035 inch. It's very small. It's just like a uh, large thread which the cobblers used to sew their uh, shoes. It's as uh, wide as that. So, uh, when we're saying is BP, it's very important to know the differential diagnosis. That's why I included all of them here. Then, other some salient features of emission retention is very nice. Eh? So, this is, you see, this patient, if you see this uh, over the uh, suprapubic area, there is a, uh, there is a, uh, this is always flat. It is never bulged like this. Even a obese person, even if he sleeps, the suprapubic area is, his obesity may be some, somewhere here. The suprapubic area will be usually uh, flat. If the suprapubic area is full, we know his retention of urine. Large amount of urine in the bladder, and outside you will see like a retention. Workup. So uh, now that uh, when a patient comes to with this, we have done some clinical examination. We know that other things have been ruled out. We have to rule out other more things before saying that nay, 
it can be uh, bph so you do urophlometry urophlometry is very important it not only tells us about the degree of obstruction it also tells us about the possible stricture because we cannot do urethrogram in all patients i will show how the urophlometry tells the about stricture we'll do a sonography because the sonography shows a very high residual urine we know it's about uh, how to go about treating the prostate whether it is in chronic retention or not chronic retention unless the only sonography will tell you that if there is a lot of urine in the bladder the kidney is solid up serum psa as i said serum psa is very important part in the diagnosis of prostate before stamping in bp is ruling out prostate cancer is very important because the symptoms of early prostate cancer and bp is just the same no difference at all unless you do a rectal examination unless you do a psa unless you keep the level of suspicion high you cannot uh, diagnose the prostate if the psa is available then mp mri of the prostate to rule out prostate cancer is for bph mri prostate is not required but if you suspect prostate cancer the psa is high mri prostate may be required our renal function test very important urine routine sugar cbc is very important i told you before why urine routine shows infection cbc may so a um, anemia in the secondary a raised sugar will uh, you treat it you cannot treat the infection with bp sonography see that the sonography will tell you if this is a enlarged lateral lobes only and this is very large median median lobe so uh, but sometimes there is no obstruction and sometimes there is a lot of obstructing things so this is why sonography is very important urophlometry for urophlometry you just know that urophlometry normally is the tissue of the bladder there are various forms of this what is important is that the normal urophlometry is like a bell if it is not not like a bell it is abnormal so this is normal this is almost like a bell so is normal it is almost like a bell so is normal this is abnormal this is abnormal this is abnormal so they inter- they are used to interpret different things but at least you should know that if this is normal flometry and this are abnormal flometry if it is like a bell mandir ke ghante ke jaisa hai to normal hai it is abnormal hai as i told you uh, urophlometry if it is very flat this is always the suspicious about stricture urethra in bp the flowmetry the flow is reduced this is the normal flow this is how in bp the flow is reduced but usually it doesn't become flat like this if it is very flat it may be other diseases like stricture like bladder failure so this is important uh salient lab report i told you about cream i told you about hemoglobin sodium very important low values may suggest you have a load patient bahut pani pee raha hai urine pyuria more than 5 ml is uti and culture will be required so jo humne kiya hai creatinine cbc electrolytes urine routine sonography in sab ke interpretation this is minimum interpretation so you should be knowing so the creatinine should not be raised the hemoglobin should be uh, should be the normal limit if the patient is hypertensive has small kidney of sonography with a low hemoglobin we have to think of ca ckd so the amel low values may suggest fluid overload urine pyuria now psa is very important see what is a normal psa is very difficult thing you know psa is what do we say a psa of 4 is normal it's not like that if for example a 40 year old man comes to you with a psa of 4 it is it is normal it is not normal for a 40 a man in his uh, 40s a psa of 2.5 is normal a man in his 50s A 3.5 is normal. A man in his 60s, a 4.5 is normal. A man in his 70s, 6.5 also may be normal. We usually do not screen with PSA after 80. This is a very important point. 80 ke baad PSA se hum prostate cancer dhundi ko nahi karte. So is chart se hum hoye malum chalte ki hum 40 ke PSA screening start karna hai. 80 ke baad nahi karna hai. This is very important information. So. Uh, when should you treat bp is it that bp is to stop ka rahega iske sath sath prostate especially after 40 the prostate will start to get hyperplastic so but kiska treat karna hai bp agar kisi ko koi symptom nahi hai treat nahi karna hai agar unko koi infection nahi ho raha hai bar bar treat nahi karna hai kidney function uh, acha hai nahi treat karna hai urine ko rukawat nahi hai treat nahi karna hai sabse important hai pehla wala cheez ki agar उसको सिम्टम्स नहीं है जस्ट बोज उधर ग्लैंड बड़ा है उसको दवाई नहीं देना है सर्जरी नहीं करना है कुछ नहीं करना अगर उसको सिम्टम्स बहुत ज्यादा है उसको बार बार इशन हो रहा है किडनी फंक्शन वगैरह वर्षन हो रही है किडनी में स्वेलिंग है रिटेंशन ऑफ यूरिन है तब हम उनको ट्रीट करेंगे बीट मेडिकल बीट सर्जरी डार्क ट्रीटमेंट 
वाई शुड यू ट्रीट डिफरेंट अभी बीपीएस के लिए कुछ पेशेंट हमारे गांव साइड से आते हैं जिनको हम टेम्सिलोसिन देते हैं यूरिमेक्स देते हो लेते भी नहीं कुछ दिन बाद में बंद कर देते हैं तो ट्रीटमेंट लेना जरूरी क्यों है बिकॉज इसे क्वालिटी ऑफ लाइफ बेटर होता है आपको बार बार उठना पेशाब आने से भागते जाना दवाई से काफी कम हो जाती है हमने टाइम पे ट्रीटमेंट किया तो सर्जरी अवॉइड किया जा सकता है जैसे आपके पास अगर हंड्रेड पेशेंट आए ओनली पीस पर बाकी रिटेंशन नहीं है उसको बाकी ज्यादा तकलीफ नहीं है रिकर इन्फेक्शन नहीं है डायबिटिकुलम नहीं है कुछ नहीं है तो उनको मेडिसिन अगर आप देंगे उनको सिर्फ सौ में से पांच दिन को सर्जरी लगेगा अगर आपने आयली स्टेज में मेडिसिन नहीं दिया तो सौ में पचास दिन को इन हिज लाइफ टाइम सर्जरी लगेगा सो आयली ट्रीटमेंट कैन अवॉइड सर्जरी प्रिवेंशन ऑफ कॉम्प्लिकेशन बीपी अगर ट्रीट करेंगे तो बीपी के कारण जो स्टोन होते हैं रिनल फेलियर होता है इन्फेक्शन होता है नहीं होगा एक इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन है कैन अनट्रीटेड बीपी लीड टू कैंसर नहीं बीपीएस ट्रीट नहीं करने से कैंसर नहीं होता है और बीपीएस के ट्रीटमेंट करने से कैंसर प्रिवेंट भी नहीं होता उन्होंने अगर सर्जरी करा लिया प्रोसेट का ऐसा नहीं कि प्रोसेट कैंसर नहीं हो सकता आई मीन बीपीएस के लिए अगर प्रोसेट सर्जरी कराया तो ऐसा नहीं कि प्रोसेट कैंसर नहीं हो सकता उसी तरह प्रोसेट को मैं नहीं किया तो कैंसर हो जाएगा वो भी गलत तो कमिंग टू ट्रीटमेंट ट्रीटमेंट हम क्या कर सकते हैं बीपीएच में ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट वट यू नो इज मेडिकल ट्रीटमेंट और सर्जिकल ट्रीटमेंट बट वट यू फॉर गैट इज रियल मोटिवेशन इज ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट उसके बिना प्रोसेस ट्रीटमेंट हो ही नहीं सकता एक्सेस पानी नहीं देना है कितना पानी देना है जितना पानी देने से पेशेंट का यूरिन का कलर स्ट्रोड हो एक एयर कंडीशन रूम में एक डेढ़ दो लीटर काफी है पेशेंट अगर एक हॉट एंड ह्यूमिड क्लाइमेट में है तो शायद चालीस रुपये कम पड़े सोने के दो ढाई घंटे पानी बंद करने जरूरी है ताकि आपको उठना नहीं पड़े कॉन्स्टिपेशन नहीं होना चाहिए क्योंकि अगर हार्ड स्टूल देता है हार्ड स्टूल मॉडल सो इज द ब्लडर दिस इज द प्रोसेस सो इफ देर इज ए हार्ड स्टूल इन द रेस्टम प्रेस ऑन द्लडर एंड दिस प्रिंटर खुलता नहीं है तो ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ कॉन्स्टिपेशन इज ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ आवर वॉट इज कॉल ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ पीपीएच टाइम हो हर तीन घंटे में पिशाब कर ज्यादा हो ही नहीं करेंगे ज्यादा होल्ड करेंगे तो क्या होगा ब्लड ज्यादा भर जाएगा ज्यादा भर जाएगा तो करने में तकलीफ होगी आप नॉर्मली देखेंगे हम भी कभी पानी अगर ज्यादा पी लेते हैं पानी मिलता है जब पिशाब करने जाते हैं धीरे धीरे स्लो पिशाब होता है तो जिनको बीपी से उनको तकलीफ और ज्यादा होती है तो टाइम पे पिशाब करना जरूरी है मैंने ऑप्शन क्या क्या है तो मेडिकल सर्जिकल ट्रीटमेंट बीपी के बारे में तो बताऊ नहीं मैं उसके लिए इम्पोर्टेंट बाकी जो चीजें हैं यूटेज होगा तो एंटीबायोटिक देंगे डायबिटिस ट्रीट करना बहुत जरूरी है बार बार इंफेक्शन होगा कॉन्स्टिपेशन ट्रीटमेंट करना जरूरी है बीपीएस के पेशेंट्स को इलेक्ट्रा डिस्फंक्शन रहती है उसके लिए कुछ इलाज करना पड़ेगा सो यू कैन नॉट प्रोगेट दिस पार्ट ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट एंड रिटेंशन अगर सही रहे तो पेशेंट को आपके पास जब आपके पास आएंगे ऑपीडी में आपको जहाँ रिटेंशन है आपको उनको कैंड करना पड़ेगा उसका एक दो डायग्राम आपको दिखाऊंगा so like these the patients if a patient comes with tension and urine catheter dalna padega agar catheter normally hum kitne number le dalte 14 number ke catheter dalte normally 10 number 12 number nahi dalte kyunki 10 number 12 number catheter ke length chote hain to aapke jo t hai t yahan tak chala jayega phir bhi shayad catheter bladder mein nahi pahunchega agar aapke urethra lamba hai to so you end up inserting the uh, what you call uh, in the bulbar region of the so it is trauma of the छोटा लेंथ के कैथेटर आठ नंबर दस नंबर देखिएगा आप कंपेयर करके बारह से या चौदह से छोटे रहते नहीं डाल आप चौदह डालिए बारह डाल सकते हैं आठ दस तो मत डालिए कभी आराम से कैथेटर नहीं जाता है तो सेंड द पेशेंट टू एरोलॉजिस्ट टू कैन समटाइम्स पेशेंट मेरे पर एसपीसी अगर नीचे में अगर ब्लॉक होगा तो ज्यादा ब्लॉक का कैथेटर जाता नहीं तो क्या हमको ऊपर से कैथेटर डालना पड़ता है इसको बोलते हैं सुप्रा प्यूबिक कैथेटर पे फुल ब्लड एंड ब्लाइंडली हम करते हैं सर्वर की जरूरत नहीं है डायरेक्टली यहाँ से कैथेटर डाल देते सो इट इज लाइक दिस दिस इज सुप्रा प्यूबिक कैरियर ये हड्डी जो है इसके ऊपर कैसे स्मॉल होल हेयर एंड दैथेटर विल गो फ्रॉम हेयर जो है सुप्रा प्यूबिक कैथेटर ड्रग्स ड्रग्स में अल्फा लोकर सब सब जानते हैं कि अल्फोजोसिन टैम्सोसिन सिलोडोसिन हम सब यूज करते हैं अकॉर्डिंग टू लिटरेचर में लास्ट टाइम देखिए ऑल आर इक्वली इफेक्टिव एक दूसरे अच्छा नहीं है बट मेडिकल कंपनी शुल कम टू यू एंड टेल की अभी यूज करो सिलोडोसिन इज द लेटेस्ट इन आवर मार्केट इट बट इक्वली लिटरेचर ऑल आर सेम बट आई वांट टू टेल यू वन थिंग कि अगर गिव मी सेकंड फॉर यूजिंग इट इन ए अल्फा ब्रोकर इन ए सेक्सुअली एक्टिव मेल बेटर टू यूज एल्कोजोसिन बिकॉज़ इट्स अ रेट्रोग्रेड इजैकुलेशन काफी कम होता है मतलब 
इधर से इजैकुलेट कम हो जाता है और एंथोजोसिस में सबसे कम इफेक्ट पड़ता है इजैकुलेशन के ऊपर एंथोजोसिस में बहुत यूज करता हूं बिकॉज़ इसके चीपर जेनेरिक क्वेश्चंस अवेलेबल हैं पेशेंट्स को अगर आपको लॉन्ग टर्म के लिए दवाई देना है आप समबडी को रोसद पे दवाई देंगे तो फिर वो लेता नहीं है बहुत यू गिव ए जेनेरिक जेनेरिक मेडिसिन टेम्सोलोसिन एंथोजोसिन सिलोडोसिन अवेलेबल नहीं है मोस्ट लाइकली बट टेम्सोलोसिन इजीली जेनेरिक अच्छे इसके जर्मन रेमेडीज वगैरह कर भी अवेलेबल है सो हम दे सकते हैं सिलोडोसिन का मेन इंपॉर्टेंट जो है जो लिटरेचर में कुछ चीजें हैं कि इट इज मोर सेफर इन हार्ट फेलियर मोर सेफर इन हाउ इट रिलेटेड लिटरेचर सो मे बी हार्ट फेलियर के पेशेंट को हम सिलोडोसिन नहीं देना चाहिए एंड कैथेटर जब हम किसी को रिटेंशन ऑफ यूरिन होता है हम सिलोडोसिन देखे कैरेटर निकलते हैं तो ज्यादा चांसेस है थोड़े से ज्यादा चांसेस है कम्पेयर टू अदर अल्फा डॉक्टर की सक्सेसफुली पिशाब कर पाए वट इज फाइव परफेक्टेड अदर ग्रुप ऑफ ड्रग लाइक फाइनेस्टेराइड यूट्रस्टाइड विनो जिसको हम देते हैं प्रोसेस के लिए वो क्या करता है वो पेशेंट के ग्लैंड को इट कैन प्रिवेंट द हाइपर प्रेशर ऑफ द ग्लैंड और ज्यादा ग्लैंड बड़ा नहीं होगा बड़ा खड़ा होगा कि नहीं डॉक्टर को ले पर यूजली बड़ा नहीं होने देता है वॉट इज इम्पोर्टेंट टू जब कुछ ब्रांड है लाइक जो कॉम्बिनेशन में मिल जाए डी टी फॉर एग्जाम्पल तो डी भी है टी भी है दोनों है हम दे रहे हैं दोनों But then remember that you are making the dose layer by double, and sometimes it may not be required. Required also. So usually start with only alpha blocker. Alpha blocker से फायदा नहीं हुआ है और gland size अगर 40 gram से ज़्यादा है तभी उनको आप nutrastride, finasteride दीजिए. Smaller gland में काम नहीं करती तो smaller gland में fibrotic component ज़्यादा होती है और glandular component कम होती है. So fibromuscular component में काम नहीं करती. And the glandular part. This uh, medicine can inhibit. So the dutrastide to be added is uh, usually not started together with alpha blocker. Uh, add on if alpha blocker alone fails to give relief, and gland more than 40 gram will respond to it better. Always say, remember, PSA has to be done before giving dutrastide. So today, if you have not done a PSA, you have given a patient dutrastide. And after one month, he comes to the PSA of four. You may feel his PSA is normal, but basically his PSA would have been eight because the doctor can reduce PSA value by half. So if the PSA is ten, you will see after one month that the doctor has seen it. So after one month, the PSA is ten. So you will see that the PSA is ten. So you will see that the PSA is ten. So you will see that the PSA is ten. So you will see that the PSA is ten. So you will see that the PSA is ten. Other groups of drugs like we have seen about alpha 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 blocker and five alpha reductase inhibitor. Alpha blocker means alfuzosin, tamsuzosin, silodosin. Five alpha reductase is finasteride and dutrastide. Both are equally effective. Finasteride is available again. I feel cost is an important part of it. There are other two groups of drugs. One is anticholinergic, one is beta-2, sympathomimetic. What does anticholinergic do? They relieve the specific of the frequency of the adult in actual age. और अल्फा ब्लॉकर देने के बाद ठीक नहीं तो आप सोलिफेनसिन टॉलरेट कर सकते हो क्योंकि ब्लड को रिलैक्स करता है ब्लड ब्लडर एक्टिविटी कम करता है बट देन सोलिफेनसिन एट फाइव एंडोरेडिन एट फोर मिलीग्राम कैन कॉज डाइनेस ऑफ माउथ एंड कॉन्स्टिपेशन एंड समटाइम्स किसी का रेस्टोर टू हंड्रेड एम एल एट हंड्रेड एम एल एट पेशेंट में गोइंग टू रिटेंशन बेटे टू अवॉइड इन पेशेंट हाई रेस्टोर यूरिन कि बाबा आपको फ्रिक्वेंसी हो रहा है करके आपको टॉलरेटिव दे दिया और अगर रेस्टोरेंट ज्यादा है तो मशीन चला जाएगा दैट इज नॉट ओके सो इफ द रेस्टोरेंट लिविंग इज हाई डोंट गिव टॉलरेटिव दैट इज मे बी यूजिंग मेरा बैकग्राउंड इज यू बी बेटर टू रिड्यूस द स्टोरेज सिम्टम क्वेश्चन सो हैव अ हायर रेस्टोरेंट लिविंग सो दिस इज यूजुअली टेंशन नहीं होता है इट इट अगेन रिलैक्सेस द सेम रिलैक्सेस ब्लड एंड रिड्यूसेस बेटर ओवर एक्टिविटी सो दिस इज मेरा बैकग्राउंड मेडिकल ट्रीटमेंट के स्टेज तक कुछ है है डॉक्टर अरुण इफ एनीबॉडी वांट्स टू आस्क समथिंग देयर आर फ्री क्वेश्चन एट चैट बॉक्स वी विल टेक एट द एंड ऑफ द सेशन एट द एंड ऑफ द सेशन यू राइट ओके अदर थिंग इज लाइक क्रॉनिक रिटेंशन ऑफ यूरिन देयर आर टू थिंग्स वन इज द एक्यूट रिटेंशन वन इज द क्रॉनिक अगेन एक्यूट रिटेंशन मींस दैट पेशेंट कम्स विद अ पेनफुल रिटेंशन पेशाब अटैक के बाद दर्द से चिल्लाते हुए आपके पास आएगा आपको उसको कैटेगरी डालना पड़ेगा इट इज ए पेनफुल रिटेंशन यूजुअली ये आठ सौ सिक्सटी के कम होता है तो एक रिटेंशन इज वेरी अदरवाइज वेरी नॉट सो डेंजरस बिकॉज पेशेंट नॉट एवेनी रिनल डैमेज बिकॉज एक्यूट रिटेंशन और समबडी कम्स टू यू और आपने सोनोग्राफी में देखा कि आठ सौ नौ सौ है 
किसी को पेन नहीं है तकलीफ नहीं है धीरे धीरे पेशाब हो रहा है उसका थोड़ा थोड़ा होता है होता है सर मैं पेशाब तो करता हूँ तो बेसिकली आप देखो तो स्ट्रीम है ही नहीं तो देट इज कॉनिक रेडेशन कॉनिक रेडेशन इसलिए डेंजरस है बिकॉज इट मे भी एसोसिएटेड विद रिनल फेलियर बिकॉज एज ए सेड बहुत ज्यादा पेशाब रहेगा किडनी ड्रेन नहीं होगा बेडर में एंड देर विल बी रिटेंशन ऑफ यूरिन so this is retention of urine i told you uh, what are the things which can uh, how to treat retention of urine first by catheterization and secondly you should know that there are some drug which can cause retention of urine to so, for retention of urine i ke liye aapke paas aaya hai catheter nikalne ke pehle usko sab alpha blocker dengi saath hi saath wo drug nikaliye jiske karan retention ho sakta hai usually parkinson disease ke kuch dawai hai jisme jo anticholinergic effect dikhta hai कफ एंड कोल्ड कोल्ड मेडिकेशन में रिटेंशन होता है एंड पाकिस्तान डिजीज सो एंटीकोलॉजिस्टिपेशन कैन कॉज रिटेंशन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट हमारे देश में कम है बिकॉज यहाँ पे तो एक दिन कॉन्स्टिपेशन होता है डॉक्टर एंड स्टार्ट टेकिंग मेडिसिन इन यूरोप एंड ऑल द कॉमनेस्ट कॉज ऑफ रिटेंशन इन इमरजेंसी इज कॉन्स्टिपेशन इट हार्ड टू इन दम स्ट्रेस एंड नॉट अलाउंग टू रिलैक्स एंड पेशन गोज इन टू रिटेंशन so at the end after the medical treatment which patients will you ask for a surgery so this is a patient with obstructed a large gland will you do a surgery no if it is good on medicine basically he doesn't require surgery surgery is only required when the patient fails to get ready for medicine or when there some absolute indications of surgery like you see somebody has a chronic retention is a absolute indication but somebody has a acute retention is a relative indication somebody has a renal failure surgery karna hi hai ek to sir us kidney ko permanent damage hoga large diverticulum we dekhi patient who has a diverticulum is because of bladder so this has to be diverticulum both are caron so structures ho sakta hai congenital ho sakta hai bp is ho sakta hai agar diverticulum hai तो सर्जरी चाहिए भी तो बीपी का ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन तो सर्जरी चाहिए रिकरेंट रिटेंशन बार-बार पीटा कराए बार-बार सर्जरी डालना पड़ता है जब तो पेशेंट हो जाता है सर्जरी रिलेटिव इंडिकेशन एक्यूट रिटेंशन अगर एक्यूट रिटेंशन है आप कैथेटर एक बार निकाल के देख सकते हैं हाउएवर किसी को अगर एक्यूट रिटेंशन है यूरिन है ओनली बिकॉज़ ऑफ बीपीएच एंड नॉट स्टोन्स और अदर थिंग दिस चांस ऑफ रिलेटिव रिटेंशन विल बी अराउंड 50% इन 2 इयर्स अगर प्रोसेस के कारण रिटेंशन ऑफ यूरिन हुआ है अगर आपके वैसे दस पेशेंट आते हैं दवाई लेने के बावजूद पांच को दो साल तक तो रिटेंशन रिटेंशन सर्जरी इज नॉट सुपीरियर टू मेडिकल मैनेजमेंट इन रिपीट इंडिकेशन किसी को अगर रेनल फेलियर है डायबिटिकुलम है दवाई से फायदा नहीं हो रहा है तो आपको सर्जरी करना ही है बट अगर ऐसा नहीं है तो ऐसा नहीं कि सर्जरी मेडिसिन से बेटर है surgery or there is its own problem today with lasers with smaller scopes problems come ho rahe however bladder next analysis steps of the urethra are can occur after surgery so i feel that surgery should not be done unless it is essential more importantly surgery doesn't prevent prostate cancer both of patient bolte hain ki doctor ek kar lete hain kyunki cancer se ho jayega baad mein surgery karne se bhi prostate cancer ho sakti hai kyunki prostate cancer prostate ki capsule mein hota hai surgery has to be done not for large prostate but when there is definitive indication definitive indication means the most important common indication kya hai ki dawai na ho fir bhi mujhe farak nahi pad raha hai the most common indication of surgery plus retention of urine always not that a small gland also may require surgery but if some large gland may not so somebody is a small gland usko dawai se fayda nahi ho raha hai still you are asking to take bone taking medicine so if you do urophobicity दवाई लेने के बाद में फायदा नहीं हो रहा है इज ए कैंडिडेट फॉर सर्जरी इज अ रिटेन हियर सर्जरी हैज मोबिलिटी ऑल्सो रेयर इन द फॉर्म ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर वेस्टा ब्लड इन एनर्जी आरटीआरपी वगैरह बहुत रिड्यूस सर्जरी लग सकता है लेजर में तो रिड्यूस नहीं होता है बट यू आर टू टेक इट रिड्यूस लग सकता है पीरियड ऑफ 5 इयर्स और 7 इयर्स सो सर्जरी की तो मोबिलिटी है तो सर्जरी शुड बी डन ओनली व्हेन इट इज मेडिकल मैनेजमेंट फेल नहीं तो नहीं होता व्हाट आर द सर्जिकल ऑप्शन एक तो ओपन प्रोस्टेटेक्टमी आजकल हम सीधे लार्ज एंटीलेटर पे 400 से ऊपर मतलब टाइप्स में 300 400 इसके किया जाता है दो टाइप्स में सबको हम लेजर से सिंगल सेटिंग में एंडोस्कोपिकली इसको मैनेज कर सकते हैं तो ओपन प्रोस्टेट और लार्ज लेजर प्रोस्टेटेक्टमी 
I I do especially when the land is very large, modern tool. Of course, they go to the old paper and they put it there. Then two tricks are very common. So I think we should know something about it. One is the laser irrigation of prostate. Another is the Q R P. Do you know the difference? What is it? Both are done endoscopically. यहाँ से एक एंडोस्कोप डालते हैं एंड हम प्रोस्टेट को निकाल देते हैं चिप बाई चिप इसको आप सोचिए कि हम उसको आप जैसे नारियल के अंदर से जैसे आप नारियल निकालते हैं चमक से समथिंग लाइक दैट कि आप इसको आप कोर आउट करते हैं दिस इज ट्यू आर पी तो ट्यू आर पी हम करने के बाद बिकॉज इज राउंड ट्यू आर पी करने के बाद भी ग्लैंड रह जाता है एंड नंबर टू ट्यू आर पी में हम यूजली एक घंटे से ज्यादा सर्जरी नहीं करते तो ग्लैंड रह जाता है सो so, This is TRP. TRP is a good surgery, but then it is not good for large glands. Somebody uh, up to 80 cc, very good hand, bipolar hand, but okay. More than 80 cc gland is not a very good gland. But laser okay. irrigation is good for all glands, small glands, a very large gland, with no bleeding and better uh, recovery in the post-op period. But when the facilities of like costly instrument, the machine costs more than a crore of rupees. The uh, smaller scopes, endoscope score cost a lot of money. So when facilities are not there, this is okay. But when some when best facilities are available, you should go with the laser. So I have shown another diagram to depict what the difference between a laser and a TRP. In TRP, we just make a channel. In laser, if you think of an orange, you go between the orange and the fruit. We make a cut a plane between the orange and the fruit. Orange and the fruit. Gradually, the fruit is Enucleated into the bladder, and then we morselate. Use a morselate as a machine to suck out that lobe and remove it. So this is so in the laser beat. Uh, Tfilm is what thulium fiber laser. Folate is what polymium laser. So these are basically the same thing. Laser enucleation means enucleation. The entire prostate gland is removed. Only the capsule is left behind. Capsule se gland bada nahi hota hai, but if gland chhod diya to gland ka hyperplasia appear hoga. So for large gland, especially, it is the treatment of choice today, and has much better uh, relief than the TRP for very large gland. Both as per the American Neurology Association and the European Neurology Association. So I will I will try to show you a small video, a specific place, specific place of how uh, an irrigation is done. Like uh, you think that I am sitting the floor of the orange, which is on the peel of the orange. So this is the fruit. This is a uh, this is this is the fruit. You see, so this is the fruit. So I am trying to push the fruit to the at the end of the cell. It's a very short thing. I show you again. So like uh, I have enucleated. So I've already uh, pushed the fruit. Uh, the fruit almost the bladder line. This is the orange. Only the peel is left behind, and then the entire orange. So these are the orogenetic orifices. Somehow the urine drains into the bladder, and as you see inside, a N block. This is this heart-shaped organ. A N block uh, prostate can be built up. The entire prostate is in the bladder. So I'll just take a morsel later. I put the morsel later, suck out the morsel. So this passage is so large now, and this is a capsule. It cannot grow. So that was I was saying. So you have to put this, enucleate this, put this fruit in the bladder, enucleate it into the bladder, and then this is a good fossa. No bleeding, pain in the bladder doesn't come out. And the results are very good. Complication of repeat surgery. So the no surgery is complete without doing the complication. Like, sir, ejaculation come होने वाला है. अगर हमें bladder extension से जो stricter होता है, इसलिए मैं बोलता हूँ कि laser से बोलते हैं laser we use the 22 mm. This is only 22 mm in diameter. And for a TRP, we use the 26 mm spoon. So like this is 26. So बड़ा चीज जानेंगे छोटा चीज के अंदर तो फिर patient को ये रहता ही है fixture होने के chances रहता ही है. So but with laser and with smaller scope ना के बराबर है आजकल बहुत unlikely है. Immediate post-op period में UTI हो सकता है. TRP के बाद regular हो सकता है. So these are the complications of BPHR. But with today with medication, laser and all the complications is next to zero. Uh, we cannot uh, um, finish this uh, BPH without mentioning post-op sutures. So post-op sutures are very uh, rare in hand surgery, but surgeons uh, with the use of smaller resectoscopes, laser BI usually suffices to treat this patient. If sutures occur, 
you have to pass the gift to the world. I am mentioning this. So the minute I was seeing your credit, somebody had it to ask me. Now the patient has a stricture. And then we have nothing to offer for him. No patta bita dilate kata rege apna use kata ko. So that's why I want to add this also. So if somebody develops a stricture, we can just cut it to the laser and do a cell dilatation for some time and see if it's a good thing. If it's not, if it's not, there is a treatment available. There is a comment. This is a good thing. So this is a stricture. The stricture is opened here. The mucosa is taken from inside the cheek. It is inserted here. And the oral mucosa is closed. So this is a diagram as you know. So we are just patching a piece of cloth like here. So this is taken from inside the mouth. We open the very small incision. The urethra is delivered. The patching is done and the urethra is closed. This is the picture here. It is gone. This is gone forever. So this is your surprise. The post prostatectomy at URP ke baad picture hai. It's all managed. So this is complete for working on on the prostate management. So if there is something now, I can. I yes. tried to cover up the entire thing. The time is already 5:30 now. Yes. So, so we have uh, people uh, of uh, one patient, Doctor uh, Kumar Nowle, who is asking persistent rest PS after PRP operation. Go ahead in management. So patient had a PRP operation. Now he is doing a persistent rest PSA. Yes. Am I right. right? Right. What is the PSA value? Is it known? Not not mentioned. Not mentioned. Okay. Now, uh, what I am telling is like as I have said, he yes. if how uh, is why is this breaking? Uh, why is the your voice is not clear, not well proper? Uh, I was clear before. It, it, in the last two minutes, it will be disturbed. Is it okay now? Is it? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay, sir. Please go ahead. So, see, uh, this is the uh, TRP fossa. So, as I said, the gland is there. Some gland is there after a TRP, or even after a hole, this capsule here. So, this is the part where prostate cancer may develop. So, somebody is having a persistently raised PSA. If the PSA is really high, then, as I told you, what are the high? So, if somebody in his 60s, a PSA of five or so may be normal. In the 70s, a PSA of maybe six is normal. If it is higher than that, we should evaluate the patient. Number one. Number two. The first part of the evaluation is a rectal examination. If I put a finger in the rectum and if I find the prostate is hard, I immediately do a biopsy. Nothing other than biopsy. So, if I uh, if I press on this one, this is the soft, this is the firm, and this is the hard feeling. If I feel that his prostate is hard. I will go for a biopsy directly. If the prostate is not hard, I can do a test known as a MRI prostate. MRI prostate gives a the chance of having how much is the chance of having a prostate cancer. So this is a scoring known as PIRAD, P I R A D. Just like in breast cancer, you have PIRAD. This is known as PIRAD scoring. So if the PIRAD score is one or two, the chance of prostate cancer is next to zero. You can just reassure the patient. This raised PSA may be just because of a inflammation of the plate, or just like BP itself. There is no chance of a prostate cancer. If the PIRAD score is four and five, a biopsy has to be done to rule out prostate cancer. If the PIRAD score is three, then you can think. If the PSA, for example, दस से नीचे है, I think you can wait and watch. And दस से ऊपर है तो biopsy करें. So I repeat. So after the TRP, glands are left behind. That gland may become cancerous someday. So, if I do a PSA, if I find the PSA high, first I do a rectal examination. Rectal examination is hard. I subject the patient to biopsy. If the rectal examination is not hard, I subject the patient to MRI so that I can avoid a biopsy. In the MRI, I see for scores one, two, three, four, five. If the score is four and five, I go for biopsy. If the score is one and two, I reassure the patient. You know, you have very less chance of prostate cancer. Come back to me with a PSA after one year again. The score is three. Then I look at the PSA value. If the PSA value is less than ten, I ask him do a PSA again after six months or one year. If the PSA value is more than ten, I get a biopsy done. So three is equivocal chances of having fifty-fifty chance of having a prostate cancer and BPH. Uh, four and five is a very high chance of having a prostate cancer. So biopsy has to be done. 
one and two is a very less chance of being a prostate cancer, so biopsy will not be done. One more question so, about sexual yes. life or TRP. Uh, sexual uh, dysfunction doesn't happen after TRP, meaning there is no loss of libido, there is no loss of erection. What happens is retrograde ejaculation. Why, if as you see in this diagram, so this is where the seminal vesicles veins into the uh, prostate. So if once you do a TRP, or I don't know, let me see if I have one more diagram. Yeah, this is better. So this is how the semen drains into the urethra. So if I done a TRP, so this place is open. The semen easily goes into the bladder and comes back, back in urethra. So there may be retrograde ejaculation. The same problem is there in medicines also. Other than retrograde ejaculation, sexual dysfunction in the form of erectile dysfunction, in the form of loss of libido, in the form of loss of orgasm does not happen after any prostate surgery. Be it open, be it TRP, be it laser. So does sexual life in BPH? Prostate size? in BPH. Okay. okay. The answer is yes. Why? Because both age related. See, with BPH is a disease of age. Sexual dysfunction is a disease of age. That's why when I told you, if you remember about the treatment part, so so when I told you about the treatment part, I, I, I told you that uh, treatment option is Treat UTI, diabetes, constipation, ED, if any. Erectile dysfunction is very common accompaniment of BPH. BPH does not cause erectile dysfunction, but patients with BPH also has erectile dysfunction. So you can treat them. But BPH do not cause erectile dysfunction. The patient known case of hypertension, diabetes, and then CKD also, which is the best choice for BPH drugs? Like Again, it remains the same. Now, what is the CKD reason for the CKD? This is a very important thing. So, so if I have somebody with a CKD because of this reason, retention of urine, retain, if the patient has a retention of urine, leaving behind a lot of uh, this one, and there is a hydronephrosis of the kidney, then it is CKD because of obstruction. So he is the absolute indication of surgery. But if the patient has small kidneys, no uh, no hydronephrosis, then I cannot blame it in the story. His CKD may be just because of hypertension. His CKD may be just because of diabetes. To summarize, if the patient has hydronephrosis, then we can say that it is because of the prostate, bilateral hydronephrosis, not unilateral. Because here there will be swelling in both kidneys. If there is a lot of kidney swelling, and after the catheter is removed, the creatine is reduced, then it should be done with surgery. But if the creatine is much more, or hydronephrosis nahi hai, then the first treatment is always medical. If the medical therapy fails, then only surgery. Am I clear, Dr. Kurim? Could I answer the question? You are right. So one more question about uh, uh, nocturia in BPH patient. How to reduce nocturia? Right? The first thing about reducing nocturia in BPH patient is behavioral modification. This is a very important thing. So, First thing is to reduce and uh, stop liquids two and a half hours before sleep. If the patient drinks a lot, he will proceed. BPH may bladder dysfunction. As I said, the poor stream, the intermittency, straining, they are all because of prostate. But the frequency, urgency, not today, because of the bladder dysfunction, which is associated with BPH, may not be directly, maybe it is related, but associated with उसके एक ट्रीटमेंट तो सबसे पहला ट्रीटमेंट है टू डू ए बेहेवियर मेडिकेशन मतलब ज्यादा पानी नहीं देना है इतने पानी देना है कि यूरिन कलर शुड बी कलर्ड सोने के पहले ढाई घंटा पहले पानी बंद करना है कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अवॉइड करना है तीन तीन घंटे में दिन के टाइम में विशाप करना क्या इज द फर्स्ट थिंग प्लस ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ बीपीड इन अल्फा ब्लॉकर अल्फोजोसिन उससे अगर ठीक नहीं हुआ है और बार बार उठना पड़ा है देन वी यूज एंटोलॉजिक और
So all these things have to be taken into care. But the basic management in 99% of the patient is variable modification, alpha blocker, as well as as well as well as well as well as well. So one last question regarding the uh, uh, test PSA, free PSA, and total PSA. What is the importance of? Yeah, I did not make a mention also today. So I wrote only about. Uh, I did not mention of about the PSA. See, free PSA is a thing of the past today. You know. So today, these are the normal values of PSA. If the PSA is not normal, he is a suspect for profit gap. So the best thing. Is to do. See, uh, I, if I biopsy everybody, there is a pain related to the biopsy. Everybody doesn't have a cancer. So, what are the ways by knowing in which patient biopsy can be successful? One is CPSA, one is MRI. But given the choice, MRI is better than looking at CPSA. So, if PSA is a so so a of seventy year old six normal on the six to PSA is that. If you do a free PSA and you find that the percentage free PSA is more than 25%, then it is a higher chance of harboring cancer. That's a bola jata tha. Till a few years ago also. Or ham unko biopsy karte the. Or percent free PSA agar normal hai to biopsy nahi karte the. Aaj isse hum nahi karte. Aaj hum PSA dekhte hain. PSA jada hai, to MRI kar lete hain. MRI mein agar parent ko four five pe biopsy kar dete hain, nahi to nahi. Ha, if MRI afford nahi kar sakta, then do a free PSA and see it is. More than 25 percent or less than 25 percent. If the free PSA is less than 25 percent, then we don't have to do more than 25 percent. Right. There's a there's a much of role. So you that's why you basically do a total PSA. Total PSA is high. Do a retinal examination. So anyway, PSA is enough retinal because I I had a patient uh, in this year. I had two patients who had December 2023 whose PSA was 3.5. They were the high grade metastatic total cancer. One was 46 and one was 78. So PSA normal में कैंसर होना possible है। अगर undifferentiated cancer है, PSA normal रहेगा और कैंसर होगा। इसलिए retinal examination is not important. Okay, sir. I think uh, you have answered all the questions, and then uh, we'll come to the end of the session. Thank you for uh, uh, like uh, the talk uh, very nicely and very elaborately. You have uh, answered all the questions and this topic also very uh, in different and very uh, easy way. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all for participation. Thank you, Dr. Somonde, for uh, invited. Like, we have invited in short for uh, when uh, accepted our presented very well. Thank you. We'll end the session. Yes, thank you.